Good afternoon, everyone. It's Cynthia Motters from Army Pink. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with Army Pink, we are on a mission to shine a light on abuse. And we do various podcasts where we talk to all kinds of guests, and some of them have had various uh, abusive situations, and they talk about that, and through that and their takeaways, we learn um, maybe what some of the red flags are, or we just find compassion that somebody is going through something somebody else is going through, and we learn and we become stronger. Uh, we have a mission here. We have an Army Pink pendant, um, and for every one of these sold, we donate uh, to Peace Over Violence, who provides transportation for somebody who needs to get out of an abusive situation. And then, um, like I said, we have various guests. And today we have Lisa Thompson. Hello, Lisa. Hello. So good to be here. Yeah, thank you. And Lisa has a website and it's called Self Beauty Love, right? Self-love beauty. Yeah. Self-love beauty. Oh, sorry. I messed that up. <laughs> but um, you are really about helping people manifest a better life, how to invest in themselves, um, empowering them and giving them uh, some of the tools, right? Exactly. Yes. Yes. Which I think is, is so important. Like sometimes we can learn from abuse and, oh, you went through that. No, I didn't spot that. But I think if we dial this all the way back and we start to learn about, well, how can I reflect on what I'm doing? How can I be a better person? How can I love myself more? That naturally, I, I mean, I think I'm not an expert like, like you, but you're going to raise your bar things are gonna not be okay, that might've been a year ago. And so I think if you could give a little intro or maybe first tell us, I'm always curious like how you got here, like what yeah. led you to this journey, right? Yeah, yeah. and I actually love sharing that because it's one of those things where, uh, who, you know, who runs Self Love Beauty is the question all the time and why am I here? And so I actually started Self Love Beauty um, back when I was a senior in college at Michigan State University. And the real reason behind it was because I wanted to share my story of struggling with confidence, with self-esteem. Um, I was always, you know, the outgoing extrovert, played the sports, got the A's. But I always say that there was something inside of me that was really struggling. I was trying to fit in. I was, you know, I, I always say it's like that that um, square trying to fit into an oval. I just wasn't working. And so I just knew that there was more to that I needed to be focusing on. So I started to talk about body image, confidence, self-esteem. Um, and from that triggered a completely new world of hearing from other people as well. And did that collaboration. Realize, sorry, did you realize like, oh, I am not that confident or I have low self-esteem? Like, was that part of your consciousness? Yeah. So I think in the beginning, it wasn't really, oh. to be honest, I think I was very good at quick fixes. Yeah. I would, I, I dieted quick fixes. I, um, I made a lot of decisions like that based off of that, not seeing that, okay, I'm back to square one, six months later and unhappy again. And right. so I think that, um, for me, it's been a journey, right? Like I think if you take me back to meeting me when I was probably six years old or 10 years old, I was the most outgoing, confident person ever knew exactly what I wanted to do with my life. Wow. And then I hit puberty. And after that, it completely like changed. Honestly, mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of women and men can relate in a lot of ways. Life goes ups and downs. Um, you experience new things that you've never experienced before. And so um, it can crush your confidence sometimes. Right. It can crush your self-esteem a little bit. And so my goal then was to really build, first we started as an entity helping people and then we flipped into a nonprofit to spread the word more. We saw, we saw a bridge or, or we saw a gap and we needed, mm -hmm. we knew that we need to fill that bridge between all generations. Cause it's not just my generation, your generation, but it's the next generation too. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I was looking on your website and I saw that you did this teen conference and I thought, oh, that's so smart to tackle people at that age group because of puberty, um, pressure to fit in, bullying, you know, and I think that if you're a confident person or you have some tools or you know how to do that, um, that's just going to be an arsenal that you can pull out and, and just help build this better foundation 
Um, and I'd love you to talk about that too. I, you know, cause I think you were, you had some anecdotes about like, ha you know, habits, like, you know, making morning, morning time for you, you know, making a schedule, staying active. I, and I think those are simple things, but we don't often put any weight into them, but they're very impactful. Yeah. And I think one of the things is, is once we start to feel good, we're like, okay, I feel good. I can go back to some of my old ways. Right. And then, and then it all creeps back in and I will raise my hand and still say, I have my moments of those. Um, but I would say the biggest thing that I tell anybody when they start to kind of decide to make a change, it's the biggest piece you have to have first is self-awareness. Yes. That self-awareness piece is huge um, because if you are starting to make that, that change and you're starting to see all of the other positivities that come with it, but then you start reverting back, the negativity is going to come reverting back. But if you're not aware of that, you're going to go all the way back to zero and then have to start all the way back. It's okay to have some setbacks. Yeah. Who doesn't have them, right? Yeah. Like we all have them, but it's about how we... I always say pull bolt moving forward, or I always use the downward spiral of, you know, when we have negative thoughts, sometimes yeah. we'll have that negative thought, but how do we bounce back quicker? And yeah. if we can be self-aware enough to notice, oh my gosh, I'm thinking this, I need to do something about it. We're saying like, well, I'll just sit here for a while. I'll just sit or, or here. Or like catch yourself if you're like, um, you know, say you get pulled over for speeding. I mean, this isn't a great example, but oh, this always happens to me. Sure enough, you know, if, it, you know, I'm the one, like, stop. Don't even go there. Don't, like, you know, feed that, right? It's like, you got to turn yeah. it into some positive. Hey, at least I didn't hurt anybody. Oh, you know, I'm glad he just caught me right here or whatever, you know? Yeah, it's that mindset shift. And the more that we focus on the mindset and ask ourselves questions, like, well, why did I react that way? Yeah. What was what was a pattern that happened here or when something bad, quote unquote, happens to us being able to say, well, what do I need to learn from this so that it doesn't happen again? What was my lesson here? Right. And I think a lot of us just kind of don't we don't sit in those types of questions to learn from it. We just we kind of have in, in a way that victim mindset of um, poor me, which we all had it. So I'm not going to sit here no. and tell anybody that and I still don't have those moments. I don't want to generalize, but I, I think as women, we have it a lot and we, we like self-doubt ourselves much more. We, we do. There's a lot of self-doubt. I think women are just more vocal about it than men. Um, to be honest with you, you know, probably the trend that I'm seeing more and hearing from is men than women in those senses currently. That right. doesn't mean like... <laughs> We, you know, women, we, we are very tough on ourselves. Yeah. Um, and I think that one of the biggest things is, as I tell anybody, if you really want to go from zero to that next level, you have to invest in yourself and investing in yourself means, you know, I'm going to go with the basics, getting right. some exercise, getting sleep, having that self-care, journaling, very basic, but sometimes it's also finding a mentor, getting mm -hmm. a coach, taking those, taking taking a class to learn more. And people say like, well, that costs money. Um, well, it's probably going to cost you more money if you don't do those things. Right. Um, In other ways know? And, too. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, and I, I always tell people like, it's um, one of the best things I did for my journey was invest in myself uh -huh. and you're your biggest investment, right? The more that you take care of yourself, the more that ripple effect is going to happen to other people. Do you, do you still kind of, are you mindful of those habits and practice them regularly? Yes, I actually, so every tool I teach, I still practice. So I believe that I can't teach it if I'm not doing it Yeah. because that doesn't, you know, the, the teacher should be walking the walk, not just talking it. Um, right. So I practice mindful listening, um, mindful intention setting. Um, my, you know, one of my friends and I, before we ever go into a big, uh, event we um we always set our intentions of oh. how do we want this to go oh, that's right? really good it's, it's amazing because it's 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 about how you change your viewpoint if you don't already have that intention set you're just going into it allowing anything to happen that's you know so you're letting true. your mind start to yeah. control it yeah. um the other thing though is you know I use self-awareness a lot because I'll share last month I had a big mental block like mental yeah. health was definitely a thing in my life a month ago but it wasn't, but I was able to bounce back quicker because I have the tools. I invested in myself and I was like, okay. So I actually worked with my coach to be like, okay, 
I'm in this rut. I know how to teach other people this, but I need some coaching. And so then she was able to ask me the questions I needed to break through oh, on wow. the other side. What were some of the questions, if you don't mind, um, yeah. like could that can help a breakthrough? Yeah. So I think the biggest thing is like, what am I truly feeling? Mm -hmm. Because it's very easy to say, well, I'm feeling sad, but like sad about what, like what has caused me to be sad and what came up for me personally is, um, it, I, it, I didn't have sadness. I just, there was something inside of me that was like restless, right? Like there was this new move and shaking in my life and I couldn't, and I was blaming everything else going on, but the real issue. And the issue for me was I'm getting married and I knew that. I was going to have to change my last name. I was going to have to do a whole new transition in my life. And transitions are scary for people. And so I was blaming everything else but the core. And so what we worked on a lot was asking myself, like, okay, but like, what's really going on? What are all the things changing in your life right now? And we looked at all of those things. And then I was noticing, I was saying victim mindset. So it's like, well, what, what's coming up? You know, and really just sitting in there, journaling about it is huge. Yeah, right. Talking about it in a safe place. Yeah. But then with, being with friends or do you talk about it just with some, like with your fiance or? Yeah, that's a really great question. Um, I always tell everybody, um, my, I have a, I have worked over the past, I would say 12 years to find a support system. Okay. And so now I have a very positive support system where if I need accountability, so yes. I needed accountability for this, right? Like, yeah. so now even yesterday, someone reached out and was like, Hey, how are you doing since last month? Do you need any, like, where are you with this? And I was like, I'm actually in a good place right now. Thanks for following up, you know? And I was able to find that, but if yeah. you would have asked me 12 years ago, I probably would have shared it with the wrong people that weren't supportive. And that's why I asked it because not everybody is the right person to kind of share those things or to get advice from because it could also send you down um, the wrong road. <laughs> exactly. Well, and I think when we start to invest in ourselves, it opens up this new platform of, um, I always say it takes us to this next level. Yeah. And then what we want to do is find the people at that level with us. Right. Now, that doesn't mean that, that those people are on your journey for the rest of your life with you, but they might be. They might be keep elevating as you're elevating, but that's yeah. okay if they're not. But mm -hmm. because we need to transform as humans. Right. And I think that that's the most beautiful thing we can do for ourselves is continuously investing. Um, I, I want to share one of this model that might work for a lot of people. It's called the me, we, us. It's when we focus on ourselves, how that ripple effect happens to the we, those five closest to us. Oh. And then how does it affect the us? It's the community, however you define community. So I always like to remind people when you think about going, say that you're at work and yeah. you're going into a conference room and you know, negative, this negative person's going to be in there. You already know you're going to leave that meeting in a negative mood because of them. Yeah. But what if you're the negative one that everybody is like, oh, I have to go to that meeting with them because they're in a negative mood. You don't want to be that person. No. Right. Like you don't want to be knowing that they're going to go home and probably project that ripple effect of negativity on their families. They don't mean to, but because someone started with it. So if we can yes. be that positive right. piece, but it all starts with us working on ourselves. Yeah. So what, like that, it's me, we, us, right? Me, we, yes. Yes. The me is you. Yeah. The we is those like closest to you. And then the us is community, however you define community. So is it like, like, again, going to the meeting? I mean, I sometimes go into meetings and I feel like I'm bringing my sword, you know, I'm, I'm going to go in for battle and I'm maybe not even like maybe these yeah. people are going to be lovely and, but I'm ready, you know, um, yes. I've got to be protecting and, um, you know, over uh, studied everything. But um, the, so the me is me bringing the right attitude to that. Is that what it is? So maybe I shouldn't be like that. Yeah. Well, I think it's also, what's your intention, right? If yeah. your intention to go in that meeting is already to be defensive, the whole meeting is going to be defensive, yes. right? Yes. But yes. if you go into the meeting of saying, I'm going to bring my, the best that of, of my ability, if I don't know the answer, yes. I'm going to get back to people and, but being okay with that. So yeah. setting that intention beforehand and calming yourself down before right. you go in swords of blazing. Cause we've all been there, right? Like I have yeah. to defend all these things, but we, we love to tell ourselves stories. Yes. Our minds love to tell us stories, true or false, right. a lot of the time. 
Yeah. And I guess, you know, to transition that to more of a, like what we're all about, um, I would bring it into a relationship. So, you know, we were talking about a meeting, but maybe um, you're having a relationship and the dynamics are challenging. And maybe when you come to communicate in that relationship, you kind of shift your thinking about how you're me going to uh, respond, react, communicate in a more positive way to see how, I guess, the other person, the we, uh, you know, takes, takes that, right? Exactly. And I think one of the things that we see a lot with communication is we communicate how we want them to communicate with us, maybe not vice versa. And so just to anybody listening in, it's called the three H's that I like, I swear by this is sometimes people come to us um, and they're just going to be on the, the, the side of the listener, right? Sometimes we come to, um, people come to us because they need to vent, they need mm -hmm. advice. They, and, and sometimes, honestly, like we think that they need something differently. So the biggest thing I tell anybody, if someone comes to you to listen, you need to be able to say, do you need to be hugged? Do you need to be heard or do you need to be helped? Oh, that's and great. So the three H's. But, you know, if you're the one that's trying to communicate your feelings, understanding, hey, this is my intention of this conversation. Like, yeah. this is what, you know, I just need you to listen to me right now. Yeah. You know, um, I actually just need you to hug me. Yeah. Um, I need you to help me. And I think what we don't do enough as the vocal ones communicating is we don't even know what we're asking for. So, yeah. Because sometimes we're just, we're all, we're feeling all the feels. Yes. Right. We're hurt. We're sad. We're frustrated. We're angry, but we're also a little happy and we love that person. Right. Yeah. And so it's all of those emotions coming into place. So being able to like, okay, what do I want to even get out of this? You know, do I want to just tell them how I feel? Do I want them to respond? Yeah. Do I want a dialogue? Like, what do you even need? I think that right. that's really huge. Well, and um, so I think too, the other component is like you talked about listening, being a mindful listener could be so beneficial because, and I'm guilty of this too, sometimes I'm coming into uh, a, co a communication or a conversation and as they're talking, I'm starting to think about what I'm going to say. Oh, and I'm like, oh, and especially about that. I want to, I want to get on that. I want to have a response, but I think maybe take a step back and really let them have their conversation because it might end up going in a direction you didn't even think that that's where it was going to go. Yes, that's mindful listening. And we actually do a huge practice around it. I will tell you from ages six to all the way to adults, that is one of their favorite activities to do with us because it's very eye-opening of how we're ready to respond. So yeah. we're not really listening. Right. Like oh. we're ready to help. We're helping to respond. And someone's like, whoa, wait, I just wanted to vent. I didn't need your advice. Yeah. And like, if you create that space where you say, okay, pull up the chair and let's talk about it. Or the other thing that I find a lot is we love to be on our phones when someone comes to us, right? Like we're texting, we're multitasking and being able to say like, okay, right now I can't give you the full attention that you deserve. Can you come back in 10 minutes? Right. And even that is really important because now you valued their time and respected their time. Yes. You know, or just saying like, you know what, let me put my phone over. Let me face you. Yeah. And give you your full attention. Because how do we feel if someone's back is turned to us and we're trying to like tell them the story, right? Yeah. It feels like um, they're not important and what they're saying is not important. And I think yeah. our phones haven't helped, you know, and, and the society in which we're living in now with all the social media and everything. And we want to capture every moment and every food dish and every thing that goes by. But I think um, getting in a better habit of realizing how that could be so distracting and putting it down, you know, because that other person may have something very important to say. And we want to, we want to listen to that. Yes. You know, and there's one other thing that you said that just made me think of a um, Brene Brown. So she has this video out there and anybody can search it on YouTube. It's like sympathy first empathy. And if anybody hasn't seen it, I highly suggest it, but it really shows how sympathy is the person standing up top, looking down at you being like, how can I support you? But really like they're kind of at a different angle. Empathy is really coming alongside someone sitting next to them on the bench and yeah. looking at them and saying like, okay, look, we're in this together. And I always think about that viewpoint of a reminder for all of us of like, wouldn't we rather have someone sit on the bench with us or yes. something down at us? Yes. Oh, that's really good. So in empowering yourself for like, you know, tomorrow's future, 
Um, is it all about like these tools? Is it a whole encompassing of many things to empower yourself? Yeah, I love, I, I love that question because it's it's one of those things where I am a studious person. So I'd be taking notes the whole time. Like, oh, I got to do this. I got to do this. And I always just tell everybody, first off, just like start with something very simple of like, well, what, like, where am I struggling right now? Right. Because I could be giving tools where maybe you're really good at it. And maybe you're, you know, maybe you're struggling in another area. Um, but starting small and noticing like, okay, one habit at a time. But the biggest thing that I tell everybody is you have to be self-aware of where you're struggling. Yes. Um, because you can't get help or decide where to go if you don't even know what's going on. Because what works for me and works for you and works for whoever else is going to be a little bit different. Right. Um, and so I think that's the first step, right? Like understanding like, okay, I'm struggling. This is where I'm struggling. Or maybe you don't even know. You know where you're struggling. struggling. You feel the anxiety and you feel yeah. like you are struggling, but maybe you haven't pinpointed exactly well, am I struggling with, you know, communicating something? Am I struggling with like you getting over, you know, the last name change, you know, yep, yep, what is it yep. exactly? Um, am I struggling with going to something where someone's going to be there and I'm uncomfortable around that person and how I'm going to, so I guess I being conscious, identifying that, right. And then trying to find the tools or the positivity to kind of deal with it. Exactly. And I think there's many tools that, you know, it de depending on the situation, but journaling is a great one to get the feelings out there. Yeah. Um, another one is finding accountability and some good su positive support. Um, mm -hmm. That's taken me, um, I will say I've always had the best of friends, but over the years, it's just gotten better because I now understand the difference, right? Of, oh, I want them to like me versus that they're going to support me. And I'm at the point where I just want people that support me. Right. Yeah. But that took years. That, I was going to say myself. That's, that's really important. What you just said, you know, you know, versus wanting them to like me versus say it again. It was so good. Yeah. Uh, wanting to like me or um, just, you know, having people that support me. And support that's at the end of the day, like for me, yeah. having people that support me has been, a big elevation in my life, like in a positive way. Yeah. Um, and I, I think I just, I t maybe took for granted it in the past when I had good people, because I was so focused on the people that didn't care about me. Yeah. Right. Cause when I was struck, when you're struggling with self-esteem and confidence and stuff, you go to the people that you're trying to prove yourself to more. Yeah. And at the end, they, they're usually the ones that aren't supporting you because everybody else is going to love you for everything. Yeah. And I think, you know, you just with age, you get there, you know, where it goes from the like to support. And I also think with me personally, on uh, my age, I found that if I'm not being supported now, I being a little more choosy with my time and maybe not spending so much time with those kind of people anymore and letting yeah. open spaces come for more of people that are more supportive or more, you know, in that way. Yeah. And I think one of the things that you're saying is so true. I think the hardest part, and I tell everybody is it doesn't happen overnight, mm -hmm. right? Like choosing those things is it's a conscious decision to make. It's right. being self-aware of this person made me feel icky. Yeah. Do I want to keep feeling icky yeah. every time I'm around them? You know? Yeah. And so that's a good reminder of like, no, I, I don't. So I need yeah. to find people that make me not feel icky. You yes. know, it's kind of like, it's very simple. We just hold on to relationships that no longer serve us sometimes because they probably have a lot of stories and years with it. And so it's easy to be like, well, they know everything about me, everything. Great. They do. But if you're going to elevate, you need to find people that are elevating with you. Yeah. And don't be complacent. And it's okay to like bring new people in your life. And it's amazing what that brings to your overall life. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. Um, Great. Well, we're running out of time. Before we go, do you want to give a little plug to your um, your platform, your website? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So if anybody is interested in working one-on-one -on -one with me, just email me at lisathompson at selflovebeauty.com. Um, visit our website as well at selflovebeauty.com. We have a lot of new digital stuff coming out in 2024, um, but we are a resource for anybody that might be struggling and looking for tools. So happy to help support. Follow us on social media as well. And thank you so much. I mean, I think all of that is so, what you said was so important for people to start reflecting on themselves, being more conscious about it and investing in themselves for a better future is like invaluable. And I think 
when you can do that and get there, you're going to have better relationships and you're going to make better choices. So uh, thank you so much, Lisa. And for yeah, all thank you for having me on. Yeah, you bet. Uh, please like and subscribe to our channel, Army Pink. So for that, we'll sign off for today. And thanks again. Yeah, bye guys. Take care. Thank you.